Hey folks, it's Greg and Jan with Strange RV Tours. Today we're in Dallas, Texas, and we're at the Dallas Heritage Village. This village was, I guess, one of the early parts of Dallas. We're real close to downtown Dallas, but there's a lot of historic buildings here, and we're gonna check it out. There's buildings that were built way back in like the 1850s and possibly before. So we're gonna check it out and see what uh, what they look like and how modern they were. Uh, yeah. All right, Old City Park. <coughs> All right, guys, Old City Park. Indian tribes were once attracted to this park site by a series of natural springs, which became known as Browder Springs after Edward C. Browder acquired the property in 1845. The springs figured in legislation which made Dallas the intersection of the Texas and Pacific and Houston and Texas Central Railroads in 1873 and launched the town's rapid growth. On July 4th, 1876, to honor the American centennial, 10 acres near the springs were set aside as Dallas' first municipal park. City Park was also known as Eakins Park because J.J. Eakin originally owned the land. By 1885, nine more acres, including the Browder Springs property, were added. The springs supplied water to the city, and the park grounds provided a center for leisure activities and group gatherings. A neighborhood of elegant homes called the Cedars grew up nearby. The city's first zoo was here. Fountains, greenhouses, tennis courts, playground, and a wading pool were later added. In, 18, in 1936, the site was renamed Sullivan Park for Dallas Water Commissioner Dan L. Sullivan, but it remained popularly known as Old City Park. In 1966, the, the Dallas Park Board agreed to allow the Dallas County Heritage Society to revitalize the park as a heritage center of restored historic structures. So let's check this baby out. They got a chicken coop over here, Jan. <laughs> you do a chicken better than the chickens. All of these buildings were moved here at one time or another as they were saved by the city. And <clears throat> they've created a village here basically to show what life was like from the 1850s to the 1920s. Right, Jan? Yeah. So, anyhow, the first place that we're going to go to is the Miller Cabin. Okay, so it was on Bonnie View. Okay. Look, I have pictures. Yeah, it looks just like it. So it was William Brown Miller. Mm -hmm. And man, this guy made some bucks. He made some major bucks. He had produced cotton, and of course he owned slaves. He had a ferry going across the Trinity River and he had livestock and started making all this money and decided to build you know a home fancy home for his family but he started out in this log cabin and that's pretty cool that they saved it that's awesome and this this um area right here that we're in in dallas right now this was where the wealthy people lived during that time. In fact, Mr. Neiman and Mr. Marcus both had homes here from Neiman Marcus. That's pretty cool. So, but let's check it out. Let's check out this uh, shack here, <laughs> this log cabin. Now, Mr. Miller built this log cabin to live in while they were building his incredible mansion, which we'll show you in just a moment. But he and his family lived here for what seven years Jan right? It took him seven years to uh, build the house mm -hmm. the mansion and he had five girls so this would be oh look at this how cool oh, this is nice bro 170 year old log cabin huh yeah wow And these buildings were taken apart piece by piece and then rebuilt here, put back together. 
All right, now we're going to show you his <clears throat> mansion they were building. This was it right over here. This home took seven years to build. And at one point during the construction, Mr. Miller purchased another 7,500 acres of land. And he was a cotton baron from what I understand. Correct, Jen? Yeah, and then he started into more livestock and stuff like that. But he was a major player down here in the south. And this was one of the first buildings moved to this property. Um, the city was actually wanting to tear it down and the residents got together and said they wanted it saved. So the, the city agreed to save the building and decided to move it over to this city park because there was nothing out here and they just had a place where they could stick it. And then all the other buildings started popping up over the years. Millermore. Okay, you guys, it's supposed to be haunted, okay? It's supposed to be haunted. All right, he, he had three wives. Okay, they say Minerva, or Minnie, or Emma haunt this. Um, Minerva got sick and died from an illness, but um, they say that Emma died in childbirth. And they say you could see her walking in the the master bedroom and the nursery area. That maybe they're not sure which one it is, but I would assume it'd be her in the nursery area losing her life and the baby. That type of thing is devastating. I can see that. All right, let's see if we can see inside of this. They do have it locked up. They only open this building up for ghost tours and we're not here at the time that they're doing the ghost tour tours so but they did say we can look inside That's so let's see what all we can see that one covered up too yeah they go all the way around over there well they don't give us much to look at then do they A woman living here has registered to vote, thereby assuming responsibility of citizenship. There you go. Okay, we're standing on Browder Springs here in Dallas. This was the main water source for this community. That's the reason that they started this community here back in the day. And here's one of the original residents here, tending her garden, her cotton. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she needs a facial. She needs makeup. <laughs> Look at free range chickens. Yeah. All right, this is the Gano Log House built in 1846, and it was originally near Grapevine, Texas. And this house is kind of unique the way it has a breezeway through the middle, which they also back in the day called a dog trot so that their dog could get a little bit of exercise without getting into the rain if it was raining it also gave people a place to work when there was inclement weather or if it was extremely hot they would put their kitchen table out here and they would eat outside yeah it is a log cabin isn't it yeah that's really cool they've got mosquito netting over the bed was found near Grapevine Mills Mall when they were putting the highways in for the airport. And very in Dallas of them, because what had happened is they built a house around this house. So when they went to go tear it down, they found this inside the house. Oh wow. And went, oh, we need to stop, it looks historic. Instead of what they usually do, oh, we need to tear it down before a historian discovers it. Mm. Oh. And it turns out, that the third owner of the home was very famous. Really? Um, his name was Richard Montgomery Gano. He was a Confederate general. Not exactly a claim to fame, but um, for more ways than one. But he, he's a very interesting person. He uh, was the third owner. The first guy bought the 
property, you know, got the section of land, built the house and stayed on it for the required number of years. As soon as he did that, he turned around and sold the house to a judge in Fort Worth. The judge added the back rooms, the upstairs room and the floor, making this a farm mansion, and then immediately flipped it. He had no interest in living in it. And Richard McNamara, you know, so he sold it to him. And when the war was over, he came back home and we know the enslaved were taken into that dining room to be told they were free. Oh, oh wow. wow. Are we allowed to yes. walk through here? Yeah, I just had to leave for a little while, so mm -hmm. I had all the barricades <laughs> up. Okay. Oh, look at that. Look at the... Wow. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Wow. So they were brought in here, and we, they, they were told they were free after the end of the war. That's awesome. That gives me goosebumps. And not only that, we know a lot about the family because Mrs. Gano was given four children as a wedding gift. Enslaved. Wow. Oh my. Three sisters and a brother. The youngest one lived to about 100 years old. And the WPA had that writer's project going to keep writers employed. One of them did an interview with her. Wow. And she shared her story about growing up here. Wow. She, that's how we know the enslaved were freed in this room. But she also shared that Mrs. Gano taught the enslaved in this room how to read and write. Yeah, in right. some states, it was illegal. It could get you fined or in jail. I, wow. We don't know about Texas, but it was still friendly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know how every family has its wild child? Uh-huh. Okay, so they, <laughs> so they moved back to Kentucky after the war and then moved back to Dallas proper where Gano built the mansion his wife thought she should have had. Mm. And their oldest son was Harvard educated, became a lawyer, and then a judge in Dallas. He's the one that had the family wild child. He had a daughter and she was a Dallas debutante. The whole family was wealthy. She was a beautiful girl. She could have married any wealthy boy in town. No, she ran off with a dirt poor wildcatter from Houston who had the audacious gall to not only be poor but to come from a family of stage performers. Oh, yeah. wow. So the family was not happy, but he did redeem himself. He never did discover oil that I know of, but he still became a millionaire because he invented a piece of oil drilling equipment that revolutionized oil drilling. Wow. And he kept it from being copied by leasing it and never selling it. Ooh, mm. there you go. So they only had one child because she nearly died in childbirth. So, because she could only have the one kid, she spoiled that little boy rotten. And he's the one you know. Oh, okay. Mm, Howard Hughes. Oh, wow. Oh, really? There's another room in the property. They got all the spinning wheels, there's yeah. cotton. Imagine me going through that just to make one little piece of cloth. So. All right, let's see what's back here. They got their garden here. Herb garden. Okay. Must be the stables, huh? Yeah. Okay. Stables. Look, chickens are following you, Jan. <laughs> A blacksmith shop over here. Oh, padlock. Wow. Look at that. Eddie. It pushed down, yeah. Yeah. So that's the first thing I saw, too. Look at that big of ice there, too. Yeah. And what are these like forms? Manville. I guess like to bend it to bend metal different ways or yeah, maybe. Smokehouse. Ah, keep your meats, huh? Yeah, smokehouse. That'd be a big ham there. Sausage. Yeah. Fruit cellar. That's 
moonshine. You don't know how bad. <laughs> so that was a home that was in Howard Hughes's family. Next up is the Pilot Grove Church, built in 1895. It was originally located in Pilot Grove in Grayson County, Texas. And it has the original pews inside of it also. So we'll go in and check this out. Made out of pine, the pews were. And it has an 1890s bell in the bell tower. I don't know if we'll be able to see that or not. But this church was in use until 1957. I wonder how they got up to the bell tower. Well, here's the rope. Yeah, I see the rope, but oh, there's a trap door up there on the ceiling. That's a little. Yeah. Organ too. The nineteen eleven Boston Sons piano. Got some stove top hats over here. Stove pipe hats. Wow. This organ is from nineteen twenty two. It's made out of oak and walnut. And this was the city of Dallas's first municipal park before they converted it back into the community that it was at one time. And these are original buildings. They've just been moved here. This was huge. This has been cut in half because of I-30. The original park was massive. Ah, the saloon. I hope they are open. <laughs> 1904, original location, Snow Hill in Collin County. That's where I'm from. There's some building here. So, this originally housed a general store. Today it is a home to a saloon, another popular gathering place where men discuss work, play games, organize fraternal events, and met for relaxation. Ladies were not allowed as patrons in the saloon and only women of dubious character would have been found inside one. In 1901, Dallas had approximately one saloon for every 75 men. We're gonna go check it out. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. This is like a real old west saloon here. Yeah, look at that. If I could just get those beers off that bar right there, I'd be a happy man. Yeah, I think they got Tony Groove top. Wow. I guess that makes sense, because when it does get wet, it would just seal it tighter together. And that wallpaper. And apparently cards, dominoes, and checkers were popular, and shoe shines. There's the bartender. <laughs> you don't argue with that guy. Man. You know why he's mad? No beer. His legs don't bend anymore, so he can't pick up the fish to eat it down there. <laughs> All he can do is look at it and growl. <gasps> All right, there was the Alamo Saloon that we were just in. And now we're going to go inside of Bloom Brothers General Store. Uh, that's good, because Janet said we were needing to go grocery shopping. And it's from 1905. It was the original location was at 2010 Lobo Street in Dallas. All right, this building was originally built by German immigrants without the help of any professionals. So watch where you step, Jan. <laughs> God, it smells all musky. Oh man, they actually have Hi. stuff to buy. Yeah. This is cool. Yeah, 
Janet, do you want any uh, canned salmon from 1890s? Look <laughs> <laughs> at that little Cracker Jack container. Sears. Got Sears and Robot catalog from I don't know what year. Old. Oh. And my mom said I used to sit and They've got a coffin back there, Jim. Oh, need one today? I hope not. <laughs> Wow, cool. it's got a separate lid so the glass doesn't break when you close it oh my or gosh. cover it. That's scary. It's a lot scarier if you're in it. All right, we're gonna go check out their the Browder Springs Hall. Browder Springs Hall, built in 1906, it was original location in Savoy, Texas. The brickwork at the top of this building is corbelled meaning that the bricks step upward and outward from the vertical wall in an attractive pattern since the actual roof of the building is several feet below this paraport the brickwork is purely decorative yeah you can see the corbelled bricks up at the top here they are purely for decoration yeah that's is it yeah that's iron wow yeah sure enough yeah so you can see where it was Okay. Foundry, foundry, foundry. I guess you'd say where it was worked. Wow. And this would be the town meeting place where they would have dances. They might have entertainers performing here, parties. Wow. And apparently they had a dentist somewhere in the area. Clayton Cooper, Mar Marcellus Clayton Cooper. The earliest, one of the earliest practicing black dentists in Texas. Okay. Oh, okay. That's... How did I miss that? <laughs> okay, so that was his equipment. You know, they put up a sign that says do not touch and it just makes you want to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. It is. Child sized leather gloves. Okay, that makes sense. Well. <laughs> It could have been a community of munchkins. You never know. We're walking on the boardwalk here in the Dallas community. As if it was the early 1900s. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. What's this place we got coming up here, Jan? Looks like a bank. It's a bank. I'll pretend we're Cole Younger and Jesse James and... Uh, whole place up Bonnie and Clyde there you go nah. Citizens Bank from 1905 originally located in Justin Texas designed to occupy the most prominent corner on Main Street this bank was built with a large arched windows and equipped with electric lights and fine oak teller cage an impressive vault compared to the general store the interior is rather austere banks were places to conduct business not to loiter or visit let's go inside and check this baby out Ready? so in the 1890s early 1900s this would be the bank that you would walk into it does look like an old west bank doesn't it yeah that's really cool that's beautiful oh look at that vault Jan, there's two big bags of money sitting back there. Can you squeeze through this fence? <laughs> I guess this is for the short ladies. This is really cool. Ah, they got a smaller vault over here. This must have been the bank manager's office. It also 
looks like today it's being housed as a dentist dentistry office this is, yeah okay so apparently the dentist was really close to the bank <laughs> he didn't have to go very far to make a deposit did he they can go take out a loan at the bank to pay for the dentist. Yeah, really. There you go. Nowadays. Get a special line of credit to take care of that bad tooth. Strange RV tours will take you places With Greg and Janet's smiling faces You might see a crazy flavored soda review Or some tips to fix your RV too. Come along, won't you join us, friend? As we discover what's around the bend. Just sit right back in your easy chair. Strange RV Tours is on the air. Strange RV Tours is on the air.